All right, before we start this video, I just want to say this video took entirely too long to make, and after this, it's back to the silly build videos. Anyways, have you ever said to yourself that Lava Walker and Thunder Super artifact sets were only made to waste your time? Or that Rain Slasher is only usable on Beto and Sayu? Well, I'm here to change your perspective on these perks, because they're actually quite powerful, and a lot of people have the wrong idea about them. While they can work as a nice damage bonus for characters of matching elements, they perform much better on characters with the opposite element. The way they work is simple. You get a damage bonus that stacks additively with things like your elemental damage goblet, as long as a certain status is afflicting the enemy. This damage bonus applies to all of your damage, so your elemental skill, burst, and normal attacks everything in your kit. It can also activate on hit or on a reaction. Now it doesn't increase the damage of transformative reactions like electro charge, but it does increase the damage of amplifying reactions like melt and vaporize. So let's take the Crimson Witch Domain for example. Not only do you get artifacts for your pyro characters, but you also get artifacts for your hydro and cryo characters to go along with them, which actually makes that domain quite resin efficient. So Rain Slasher for example that people love to hate on is actually quite good on Diluc. In fact, the Kaching mains crunch the numbers and in Diluc's usual team of Bennett, Zhongli, and Xingqiu, at R1, it beats out Prototype Archaic and Skyward Pride, while remaining competitive with Black Cliff Slasher. And at R5, it beats Unforged at max stacks and while shielded. Only way Unforged is able to pull ahead is by running an EM Sands instead of an attack one, but I've actually leveled my own Rain Slasher, and I can confirm it is indeed the better weapon. The only time Prototype pulls ahead is when you do Melt instead of Reverse Vaporize, but the difference is hard to notice at a glance. Shing Cho is another good example where Lava Walker is his best vaporized set, and R5 Lion's Roar is his best in slot weapon for damage. And if you didn't know already, Shing Cho's C6 basically fixes all his problems, so he doesn't have to run energy recharge anymore, and instead can run attack and EM main stats on your weapon and sands, while having a little ER in your sub stats. Lion's Roar beats a majority of the 5 stars in terms of damage, and the only one that edges a little ahead is Miss Splitter, but it literally has to be R5, and you have to sacrifice all your crit rate to do so. Personally, I don't think it's worth the money, but to each his own. Dragon's Bane is also worth a mention. Usually it's seen on Shangling and Hu Tao, and it's a great option as it boosts the reverse vaporize damage, and even without reactions, they get a sizable increase in damage. But it's also a great weapon for a reverse belt Rosaria, thanks to its Pyro Bane. So you're probably wondering, where does that leave Thunder Super set as well as Lion's Roar and Kaching, since they don't affect transformative reactions? Simply put, the damage increase is significant enough for that really not to matter. Matter. Lion's Roar remains a strong option not only for Electro Kaching, but also Physical Kaching as well. Xing Shou, even in an Electro Charge team, will still benefit from Lion's Roar due to the increase it gives when enemies are affected by Electro, and with a bit of resistance shred, it's absolutely disgusting. But it doesn't stop there. Neutral element characters like Zhao, for example, can also benefit from Thunder Suver and Lava Walker. Swirl spreads an element in an AoE, and can bounce between targets infinitely so long as there is more than one target, which easily gives 100 percent uptime on any status. Both of these sets deal more damage than his usual 2 Viridescent 2 Gladiator, though each set has its strengths and weaknesses. So Banes are really nothing to be afraid of, give them a try, I know a lot of people are throwing out good Lob Walker pieces, but little do they know they can be used on their supports or sub DPS characters. I myself am farming a 4 piece Lava Walker set for Aloy, but I also really need better artifacts for my Diluc that I'm honestly thinking of benching for my C6 Yanfei. Rain Slasher is another weapon that has a bad reputation, but it's actually insanely good, and I had a feeling it was, but I didn't really bother to level it until I saw the calculations done by the Kaching mains. Anyway guys, that's all for me, I want to thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time, peace. Thank you.